So right here I have a fully specced out MacBook Pro M1 Max that I just picked up yesterday. Here I have what I picked up about four or five months ago, uh, top of the line Windows laptop. Uh, it's the Asus, Asus Zephyrus Duo uh, SE with the RTX 3080 laptop uh, high wattage graphics card and a Ryzen 9 eight core overclock chip. So what I wanna know is, is this MacBook going to give me a better experience overall, real world editing um, video in DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro than this Windows laptop. That's all I really care about. I don't care about uh, benchmarks or anything like that. I'm a full-time video editor. I have a video production company. We do a lot of weddings uh, and business video uh, production for businesses. So that includes the Canon C70 in 4K and in 2K and the Blackmagic uh, 4.6K, 4K, and 6K with the Ursa, the Pocket 4K, and the Pocket 6K Pro. All right, so I'm gonna pull up a few projects uh, that, are, that are either done or, or mostly done and have some timelines to scrub through in both DaVinci Resolve and in Premiere Pro. So here I have a fully edited wedding video and it has Canon, Blackmagic RAW, ProRes, all those files, some drone as well. And I mean, it's also playing back. I'll move so you can see a little bit. It's also playing back. Fine, and it's got the smart rendering on, so it, it is rendering in the background. Um, but that's again, that's how I would use it uh, in real world scenarios anyway. So that's kind of how I want to test it. What a journey it has been. It's skipping here a little bit when I play. Then it catches up and goes. And we met some 10 years ago. Since that moment. So playback's okay. Scrubbing, let's see. It's pretty solid as well. And this is all color graded. There's also film grain on here as well. All right, so now let's try and export. I'm going to export this finished wedding film. Color grades, film, uh, color grades, film grain, text, drone, C70, Blackmagic RAW, ProRes, all that in this. So let's export this here on the Windows machine, see how long it takes, and then get the same thing up on the Mac. All right, so that just finished here on the Windows PC. Three minutes flat to render this uh, wedding film, fully graded, lots color grading, film grain. Uh, it is a six minute and 48 second long video downscaled to 1080. So three minutes flat on the Windows PC. It's scrubbed pretty great, even though I can see by all the little icons that the smart um, rendering and everything in the background wasn't fully done. So some of it was pre-rendered as it's scrubbing through and some of it wasn't. All right, so we have the same project now pulled up in Resolve, uh, the same one that we just did on the Windows machine that exported in three minutes and scrubbed pretty well. So let's go through here on the MacBook and we'll just see how it scrubs. I expect it to be just the same. I mean, no problem at all. Yeah, it's smooth as butter. I mean, and the speakers clearly sound better on the MacBook too. And, and I don't know if it's just the mouse, the trackpad. Um, it feels a little smoother, but I mean, I had no complaints on the Windows machine, so it's probably just in my head. All right, so let's go ahead and export this on the MacBook. Same exact files as the Windows machine. Really interested to see if this beats the three minute mark. Slower, about the same. So let's go ahead and check that out. All right, so it just finished. Wow, I did not expect uh, almost a or more than a minute quicker on the Mac exporting the same exact file in DaVinci Resolve that I did on the Windows PC. One minute and 50 seconds. So I guess all else being equal, in DaVinci Resolve, working on the typical kind of edit that I would work with, it's going to be just about the same smoothness on the, on the playback on the timeline, but it's gonna export much quicker. I don't know what the percentage, it's like 25% quicker at least. So three minutes in the windows, minute and 50 seconds on the MacBook. Okay. All right, so let's try a Premiere project. This is probably what everyone's waiting for. I think the consensus is that Resolve is very well optimized for Mac. Um, so Premiere, maybe not so much. Let's give it a shot. So here we are in Premiere. I have a project up that's a commercial video we shot and it is mostly interview with some B-roll. The cameras are going to be the 6K Pro I shot in 4K ProRes, and then the Ursa Mini Pro G2, which is 4.6K Blackmagic RAW. So that's what we have here on this timeline in Premiere on the MacBook Pro, and 
just a straight interview um, project with with no with some coloring, just just a lot and a little bit of tweaking to the color, nothing serious. Two video layers, and on the MacBook, it's playing back and skimming through. I mean, perfectly, really. Skimming through fast, no hiccups at all. And it's got some color. I mean, this might not be final, but it's close to how I would deliver. I might, you know, obviously correct the skin tones and all that stuff. But let's just try exporting out with, um, I just turned on some film grain. So we'll add a little bit of grain to it and we'll try exporting this out. Timeline playback on the MacBook Pro in Premiere Pro. It's pretty good. So let's try exporting this five minutes and 55 second long clip. We'll see how long it exports. We'll boot it up here on the Windows PC. We'll scrub through, we'll export it, and we'll compare the two. And I'll render at maximum depth, and I'll also use maximum render quality. And let's see. All right, this one I will need to use a timer because, uh, because it doesn't tell you in Resolve how long it took. All right. All right, right off the bat, it says four minutes, but it's, it's chugging along quickly. So we'll see how long it takes. So this is weird, it's still exporting, but this pop-up just came up where it says force quit apps. Your system has run out of application memory. To avoid problems, quit any applications you're not using. And it's this listing everything open, minimal usage, but then it shows Premiere Pro at 38 gigs of memory, which I think this, this is 64 anyway, so I'm sure it's just a, a kind of an Apple warning, hey, this program is using a lot of memory. Not too sure about that, but if I just close it, keeps rendering like usual. I'll have to look into that, but as far as I can tell, I mean, it's, it's still working fine. I'm not sure if that's slowing it down or not. All right, so that just finished four minutes and 39 seconds for the Adobe Premiere Pro rendering of a six minute long clip with film grain maximum depth, maximum render quality, and uh, color grading. Four minutes, 39 seconds. All right, so we have same project. I'll wait for the peak files to generate. All right, so the peak files are now finished. Let's try scrubbing through. This is with the film grain turned off. It's pretty solid. I feel like even if you go real fast here, it's no, it's, it's not keeping up all the way. It takes us, don't really even notice it. I mean, you never really scrub this fast anyway, so. Playback, there's, there's no issue with playback. All right, turn on the film grain. Try scrubbing. Realistic pace here. I mean, and it's totally workable. This wouldn't slow me down at all. Even if you, if you go fast, I mean, I feel like it takes a second to catch up and I can hear the fans kicking on, but it's pretty smooth. Playback, no drop frames. Again, we're at, oh, it's, it's chugging now, actually, with the film grain on, it is, it's a little sluggish with the film grain on. Okay, so it's a playback. And what I saw online were some Puget Systems benchmarks where the Mac scored faster in real-time playback than like a top-end desktop. So I think I kind of expected that but I did see that it was a little quicker on the export. So let's, all right, so let's export this same clip, about six minutes long, 1080p, maximum render depth, uh, maximum render quality, same exact thing. We'll see how long it is compared to the Mac. Wow, 12 minutes for that same export on Premiere Pro on the Windows. Like I'm questioning, did I not have the grain turned on on the Mac or something? I, mind blown. Four, what was it on the, on the MacBook? It was four minutes and 39 seconds, same project, exported to 1080p, color grading, film grain, MacBook Pro, four minutes, 39 seconds. Same exact project, same files, 12 minutes and seven seconds, in Premiere Pro on Windows. All right. Okay, that settles it. That's gone. I don't, I don't know what else to say. And of course, I'm going to use this over the next few weeks to edit real projects. And I'll, you know, 
I'll have some real world feedback after like a month or two of using it every day to run my business. So overall, DaVinci Resolve, pretty similar on both machines. Exporting was a little faster on the MacBook, quite a bit faster, um, I guess, but about 25% faster. When it comes to Premiere Pro, which I thought the Windows laptop would really hold its own, I mean, playback and everything was pretty similar, a little bit better on the MacBook, I'd say, but the exporting, four minutes and 39 seconds to 12 minutes and seven seconds, I mean, that's just, that's more than double the time. So, I mean, there you have it. That's just my unscientific testing here in the office, and it is what it is. I mean, I think the clear winner is the MacBook Pro M1 Max fully spec'd out. I don't know if, if you need to spec it out this much to even get this performance versus the Windows, but I mean, I guess I'm keeping the MacBook. Okay, well, if there's anything else you'd like to see specifically between these two machines, if you think I did something wrong, feel free to let me know. I'll make another video. I guess the real question is, how does this MacBook compare to that desktop behind me, which is an RTX 3090 and that uh, 16 core Ryzen with 128 gigs of RAM? Um, that's been my primary edit anything, no slowdown machine. But does this MacBook come close to it for like, you know, way less power consumption and way smaller of a footprint? I'll have to test that out maybe. Tell me if you'd like to see that video in the comments, let me know. Um, and again, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.